It's often possible to convert an older gun from rim fire to center fire. Let me show you one way to do that. Here's an old Winchester Low Wall 1885 that I've had rebored and then chambered it to 357 Magnum. This gun was made in 1891 and the original 32 caliber bore was badly pitted. The breech block is still in the original 32 rimfire configuration with the firing pin designed to hit the edge of the case. Since the barrel is now chambered for a center fire cartridge, the 357 Magnum, I'll need to move the firing pin to hit the center of the primer. I'm going to plug the original firing pin hole before drilling the new one. We start by clamping the breech block in the milling vise, then drilling out the old firing pin hole with a number 28 drill, being careful not to drill too deep, then tapping it for an 8x40 screw. I'll chamfer the mouth of the hole, then degrease both the screw and the threads. Using green Loctite on the threads, I'll turn in the screw till the tip is flush with the back side of the firing pin channel. Once the Loctite is cured, I'll cut off the excess screw and peen the outer edge of the screw into the chamfer. The vise is padded with tape to keep from marring the breech block. Any remaining material is dressed off until it's flush. Next, I'll locate the new firing pin hole. I could convert the rim fire pin to center fire. However, I've got an original center fire pin with a broken tip. To locate the new firing pin hole, I've made up a bushing to position it in the center of the firing pin channel. I'll drill all the way through with a 564 inch bit. To prepare the broken firing pin for a new tip, I'll chuck it in the lathe and face off the broken part of the pin. After center drilling the face of the firing pin, I'll drill the new hole about 3 8 inch deep with a 564 drill. The new tip is made from a piece of number 49 drill rod. I'll check to make sure it doesn't bind. Old timers would have used soft solder, but modern chemistry has given us green Loctite, which will hold it securely. I'll shorten and round the tip till I have about 50 thousandths of protrusion. I'm using a washer to prevent cutting the tip too short. The last step on the breech block is to drill a 564 inch vent hole. I'll locate it in the same position as on the factory center fire gun. This is really important for center fire cartridges as it will help vent off the gas if a primer is pierced. The hole extends all the way into the firing pin channel. All that remains is to reshape the extractor for the larger cartridge. I'll install the extractor and scribe a mark to note how much material to remove. Then carefully grind off the excess. I'll reinstall the extractor and very carefully use the 357 chamber reamer to cut it to final size. Once everything is back together, I'll function test it with a dummy round. Then I'm off to the range. When test firing with some 38 Special Ammo, it's obvious the firing pin is hitting too low on the primer. A firing pin that doesn't hit the center won't always fire the round. To demonstrate, I've got the parts assembled on the outside of the action. The three key parts 
are the breech block, finger lever, and the link which holds them together. Since the breech block is a little low in the receiver, raising it to align the firing pin with the center of the primer requires a new link with the holes slightly farther apart. Looking at the old case, it appears I have to raise the breech block about 40 thousandths to center the firing pin on the primer. Because the link is at an angle, I'll have to increase the length by a little more than 40 thousandths to raise the block the correct amount. The hole spacing on the original link is 428 thousandths. I'll make a pattern link out of quarter inch brass since it's quicker to shape than steel. The holes are drilled with a number nine drill. I'll trace around the original link to mark the shape. I've applied dicom to make the scribe lines more visible. The bottom holes extended about 50 thousandths and the outside edge is blended around the new hole. Then the pattern link is cut out and shaped. Obtaining the original shape of the link is very important as this bump retracts the firing pin when the lever is opened. Once the brass link is finished, we can reassemble the gun for a simple test. You may get it right the first time, or maybe not. Now I'll make the real one out of steel. Notice this little curve in the link? It's needed for the longer length to clear the inside of the action. All that's left is to harden it using case nip. First, the link is heated red hot then dipped in the case net powder. And heated red hot again before quenching in water. Now the surface is hard and will resist wear as the gun is used. Once everything is together, it's back to the range. Wow, and this is what we're looking for.